This channel is supported by my online fishing courses, and you can learn more and get significant discounts at saltstrong.com slash Skinner. I'll have links to all of the gear in the video description, and if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. All right, here's where we're headed with this one. Uh, top water flats bluefish. That's a 16-pounder. Here's a couple of big ones, two at a time on the same plug. Uh, yeah, so th these things are a lot of fun in the shallows, and uh, so that's what this is about. All right, and part of this is uh, I'm testing two, um, actually it's, it's the same Savage Gear pencil popper in two different sizes, and uh, a couple things I'm evaluating. One is you know, how well does it cast, how does it look on the surface of the water, and obviously do fish eat it. And Yeah, I understand bluefish sometimes eat everything in sight. Um, if you have experience with springtime flats bluefish in the shallows, uh, then you know that that is not always the case. They can be really picky. Um, and yeah, I've gotten in on this fishing a, a few times over the last couple of years, and it's a lot of fun. All right, typical uh, pencil popper retrieve. You'll be able to get the speed when the uh, plug comes closer, when it makes it in there. Uh, yeah, it's called a panic pencil. Great name. That thing has beautiful side-to-side -side action. There we go. First cast. Okay. All right, a feature of these spring flats blues is they often, uh, there's no indication, uh, there's, there's no blitzing, there's no birds. If it's really calm, you might see them finning. Um, you may see them cruising in the shallows, but it's not the typical blitz kind of stuff where you see a, a frenzy on top of the water. So, you know, you really got to test the water. I'm, so I'm really happy to get you know, hits, a hit on my first cast and then uh, hit on my second cast. I feel like I'm overcasting them. All right, so these hooks have totally crushed bars, so basically pins. Ho -ho. All right, there's a mix of sizes here, and this is more on the medium size, but uh, as I moved around a little bit, I was able to find some bigger ones and then some really big ones. So some people will use wire leaders with bluefish, and I just don't. Um, I'm using 50-pound test Seaguar inshore fluoro. Seaguar blue is also excellent. Uh, I can tell you, so I did this two uh, afternoons, and you're going to see the other afternoon when I'm going to switch rods, go to a larger plug. Uh, over those two afternoons, I'm sure I had 40 bluefish easily. I mean, it's just about every cast. I'm not showing all the fish. I'm showing some of them. Um, I lost one plug, so uh, you know, I did have to... Cut back on the on leader a couple times, replace the leader. You know, if you just keep an eye on it, keep it checked, um, you're really not going to lose many plugs, especially with pencil poppers. And the Seaguar Inshore is what I was using down in Florida, and I landed four tarpon on that stuff and uh, f using 40 pound test leader material. And if you tarpon fish, uh, you, you know how they can be very abrasive and, and cut the leaders. 
uh, chafed through the leaders. And uh, you know, these were all decent tarp, and these weren't um, the little juvies. And uh, I lost many tarp, and, and never once uh, did they go through the leader. So I'm liking the cigar in shore; it's working well. I think out of all the fishing I do, this could be what I consider to be the highest chance of um, sending me to the emergency room. Uh, there's uh, things that can go wrong here. Uh, one of them is, boy, when, when these fish are close, I mean, this guy's green, I just hooked him. If he dives between the legs and, and catches uh, uh, a hook in the leg, um, you know, certainly that would be bad. Unhooking them, yeah, they're thrashing around. Uh, like I said, those barbs are way crushed down, so um, yeah, I should be able to slide the hook out should something go wrong. The other thing is, boy, when you're catching a lot of fish, and this goes for any kind of fishing, um, when you're pulling that fish towards you, make sure that rod's off to the side because the plug comes free and it's flying back at you. Um, yeah, that could be a problem, but yeah, with the fish green like this and in the water, uh, got to be a little bit careful. And s a single hook, at least on the tail, would make it a little better. Like I said, I'm testing these plugs. I want to use the hooks that come from the factory on the plug. I want to test uh, these plugs right out of the box and, uh, and see how they work. But I figured smashing the barbs down completely, that would help. But uh, yeah, under normal circumstances, at least on that tail hook, I would put a single on for this kind of fishing. be able to see I've got the whole school there there's about 12 bluefish two on at the same time but one oh came boy. off <laughs> I, don't get the oh. I had two and one came off and you saw there what I meant about the plug from flying back when you know the fish is changing directions all over and yeah you know the rods gonna cross in front of you at some point and um, yeah just watch for that thing coming back at you hey a bluefish broke to the right it's like the only splash I've seen except the ones on my plug Yeah, and you're seeing less than half of the blues that I had on that plug because uh, I'm not showing them all and I had actually had some of this action the, the previous day in my boat with the trolling motor uh, in the shallows and so that plugs definitely had a couple dozen blues on it and uh, yeah and you know what even when the finish is damaged uh, you've got really like a silver underneath so it still looks good. All right and that plug casts real well and it's right into that wind no problem but uh, like I said there's two sizes and uh, this is the larger plug. This one's six and three quarter inches and two and three quarter ounces, and the uh, smaller plug was five and three quarter inches, one and three quarter ounces. And to handle that uh, larger, heavier plug, I've gone up to the uh, nine foot two inch dark matter Skinner surf rod.
Double trouble. Come on, one of them, come off. Oh, thank you. Oh. All right, this plug on uh, this rod, yeah, I can cast this thing a mile. I don't think I need that distance here, but uh, yeah, if I needed it, it, it's got it. some tail on this one. Oh, ho, ho. Wow. If that's not two, then that is one hell of a big one. Yeah, I haven't been showing it, but uh, to unhook these, I've been using my 60-pound bogle grip uh, to control these. And honestly, I don't know how you could unhook a bunch of these out in the water without having a lip grip to help stabilize the fish. Uh, you'll get to see the, the boga uh, later on a different fish. It took me a long time to find a, a decent carrier on my belt for the 60-pound boga, and uh, I've got one now. The uh, I think it's Turtle Cove Tackle. I'll put a link in the video description. And it's good because um, it, it holds it well and uh, it's easy to get it out of the holster, which is important when you know when you need it. So it's um, actually they make the plier case that I'm using as well. So uh, there'll be links. Turtle Cove Tackle. Oh yeah, that's the move that worries me right there. Where do you go? Ah, uh, yeah. Oh well. All right, I'll leave you with the largest bluefish that I've caught since the fall of 2017. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that notification bell.
now this is really a big one This one I really, I would like to land this one. That is something. Wow, holy crap. Wow. That is a 16 pound bluefish.